Hello everyone, welcome to Fandom Focus, and today we'll be reviewing Twice Upon a Time, the 2017 Doctor Who Christmas Special. Hey everyone, I'm Maiden. And I'm the Doctor, simply the Doctor, the one, the only, and the best. Well, actually I'm Captain Kyle, Ooh. and uh, <laughs> as you can see, I'm a Doctor Who fan, May's a Doctor Who fan, and we just watched the Doctor Who Christmas special. Pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought bringing in David Bradley as the first Doctor, <laughs> especially that initial scene where they showed the black and white and then it faded into the color with him, mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah, the transitions with him were pretty perfect. So that was a very cool thing, seeing 12 meet one. And then they met an interesting captain from World War One. Spoilers, there was a second one. And what did you think when the captain appeared? I was concerned that since they had someone playing the first Doctor that they would try to introduce the Brigadier and he looked nothing like him. <laughs> Which they didn't. Yeah, they Thankfully. didn't introduce the Brigadier, though they kind of did a little bit foreshadowing mm-hmm they ran into some weird glass people and then of course when they are drawn in to this craft whatever it was time ship as it turned out to be uh, they ran into Bill Potts that was cool to see Bill back again well, I think it was shown in the promos that she would be coming back oh yeah we knew she was yeah. gonna be in it but it was it was an emotional, you know, reunion of these two, but then of course the doctor's suspicious. He's always suspicious. <laughs> so he was not uh, convinced it was the real Bill, which it kind of is and wasn't at the same time. Yeah, theoretically, you could say the mind is the same. So huh. if it was still her when she was a Cyberman and he still saw her as her. They do say that the personality is a product of our memories and experiences. So since she had the same memory and experiences, though in a different body, it was kind of Bill. Yeah. It was interesting to see the banter between mm. the 12th and the first doctor. That yeah. was hilarious. What is it with older doctors who uh, diss the sonic screwdriver? When he was credited for inventing it, maybe he got the idea in 12. Yes, but then he immediately regenerated, so... Hmm. Yeah. What happened I, there? <laughs> I, I have another video where I talk about all the Sonic screwdrivers, and it has been my belief that the first Doctor was credited with inventing the Sonic screwdriver, though he did not actually use one. Hmm. And it appears that maybe that is incorrect. At least now that we've seen the first doctor's reaction to a sonic screwdriver. Mm. It's like, that's absurd. Not anything I'm already thinking of. <laughs> but the doctor still has the sonic sunglasses, which is kind of interesting. So he didn't get rid of those when he got the new sonic screwdriver. He just... They were just too cool. Yeah, well... <laughs> Seeing the first Doctor wearing those was kind of cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly what you'd expect to see the first Doctor wearing. Hmm. I also found it very interesting, the uh, sexist overtones mm. of the first Doctor, which shows that he had an understanding of Earth culture and um, Time Lord culture that's way back, and he was quite often corrected, so I thought that was an interesting touch. I don't know that we necessarily wanted to paint the first Doctor as sexist, but he kind of, I guess, was at the time. Well, he's grown, and I haven't seen a lot of the first Doctor episodes, so I can't testify as to how he behaved. But it's, it's true. I'm sure that uh, I haven't seen a lot either. I'm sure at that time there was a lot of first Doctor episodes where the woman was not considered as... 
capable or had different roles than men. So him kind of correcting that yeah. was kind of cool. Although the, uh, the the first two companions, the the teacher and her husband, they were pretty equal. So that was cool. Yeah, so it shows that people can learn, which is definitely a good thing. So this was a Christmas special, but it did not seem that Christmassy. It was not... Uh, it didn't seem to have the Christmas overtones of A Christmas Carol or even the episode The Next Doctor, which I've seen that. You may have guessed I've seen that particular yeah, episode. Yeah, no. All the, all the previous Christmas specials have been very heavily saturated with the fact that this is a Christmas special. And it was mostly centered on the companions and their family trying to celebrate Christmas, but being pulled away. Or, of course, Santa Claus showed up. Yes. But this, like, it happened on Christmas, but it didn't feel like a Christmas story until the very end. I found the effect of the frozen snow was kind of cool. Mm. Um, just... You push it away and it went back into place. That was kind of neat. Yeah. And there must be something when time stands still. They're on the South Pole and we didn't see any breath from yeah. the captain. He would have been freezing to death wearing that outfit on the South Pole. In fact, they all would have been like frozen solid on the South Poles. Yeah, unless... I can't remember if there was like breath before the time freeze or they just were on a set. Probably on a set, <laughs> or it's some um, Time Lord technology to keep you warm mm. that we don't know about. Mm. Well, maybe he just has heating pads in his big pockets. <laughs> he or could have heater. some. He could have like, <laughs> he could have a chimney in there. <laughs> They're bigger on the inside. So, what did you think of the main villain? Well, not really a villain. It's the main people encountered the. Uh, Testimony. The testimony, yes. The uh, the testimony, or testimonial people from the future. That was an interesting thing. And it turned out that they didn't have an evil plot. Yeah, I mean, that is something to be said for creative writing and the whole not everything has to be something to fight. But it just kind of felt odd that there wasn't really a fight and then a triumph. Right, though there was a little bit of a triumph over what the testimonial people were doing, returning the captain back to his yeah. time of death. So but it was kind of lessened by the fact that they weren't actively trying to fight them. Right. And they went to, I'm guessing it was, was it Scaro where Rusty was? To get... I would suppose... <laughs> It looked like it could have been Scaro. They didn't actually mention it by name. Yeah, they didn't, like, caption where they were. And the first Doctor seemed to be looking at the Dalek stuff and recognizing them, even though he didn't meet the Daleks, I don't believe, until later on in the series. Yeah. Overall, it was a fun episode. It was cool, I think, mostly due to the banter between the first and the twelfth mm. Doctor. And the end was pretty heartwarming. Yeah, definitely. When Bill returned uh, the memories to the doctor. Well, I was so. just talking about the armistice, but okay. <laughs> well, that is actually history. Yeah. Um, but, and that was heartwarming too. And just kind of bittersweet when they're like having to go back to their trenches. As touching as that was, I found it much more touching to finally that return of Clara, you know, just as a vision. I had forgotten that he'd forgotten her. You forgot? <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that he forgot her. Okay. Um, in fact, when he was in the TARDIS diner <laughs> with her yeah. and didn't recognize her, that was, that was a little heartbreaking as well for him to just go off. And yeah. I wonder if she will be back at some point if the new doctor will encounter her in the diner. And they're gonna 
overdo her even more. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I realize Clara is a polarizing character mm-hmm. in Doctor Who. Some people loved Clara. Some people thought her importance was overblown compared to previous companions, even Amy. Yeah, I felt like they dragged it on longer than it should have. I was ready and like actually appreciated the moment when she went into the time stream and I thought that's when she would die. And I'm like, oh, that's a great moment and a way to do it. And she's just like, hey, I'm back, can't be killed. <laughs> Okay, now you're a bit much. Well, that's also the interesting thing about that is it's like, how do you top that? I went into the time stream and basically went throughout the doctor's timeline to uh, save him from someone who was trying to destroy him. Yeah. How, how do you follow that up? The Clara that appeared mm. was also a memory. So presumably she dies at some point during the next five years billion years or five million years well it was either that or just her bringing back his memories of her and him experiencing it the same way that eleven experienced amy right that she wasn't actually interacting with him so i'll be curious to see Mm. with the new doctor who had uh, one line and then was promptly sucked out of the TARDIS, whether when she does eventually regenerate into someone else, if her companions will visit her in her mind. Is this mm. going to be a thing? Is this going to be a thing? Yeah, they're they're starting to repeat things, even with the last Christmas special. We have a new showrunner, a new doctor, and lots of things to see. Yeah. It was interesting that the whole premise where the 12th Doctor didn't want to regenerate was mirrored by the first Doctor not wanting to regenerate. I enjoyed the special. I liked it. Yeah. It was a good intro for the new Doctor, a good flashback to the first Doctor, excellent use of David Bradley, a uh, good tie-in to um, the Brigadier. Mm-hmm. And yes, the Captain is the ancestor of the Brigadier. But it was cool to see the initial... Um, crossover of that family with the doctor. So And 12's realization. <laughs> it's like, look after my family? Oh, he can pretty much promise you that. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, a fun line. Lots of fun Easter eggs, lots of fun things talking about other parts of the series. Which yeah, is... I do like that they're harkening back to the classics more. I mean, they always paid some homage to it but episodes like this and just either showing things in the TARDIS or mentioning things it's a really nice touch. I I wonder how much of the uh, set they borrowed from the uh, now defunct Doctor Who experience. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what it looked like? They did have I believe it was the original TARDIS console in the Doctor Who experience which I luckily got to see before it shut down. And there's a video that I have showing all the wonderful props and costumes. Yeah, that might be there. Yeah, right above my head. Yeah, there's a link to it. And there might be a link at the end, too. Yeah, so don't click away yet. They have over 50 years of episodes and storylines that there's just such a richness of material that they can interweave, so... And uh, we got to see the first on-screen appearance of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor. It only took a moment, but uh, that's pretty much what you expect at the end once yeah. there's a regeneration. And it's when the 2B continued came up, I'm like, yeah, it better be. <laughs> yeah, but I have noticed as far as the ending, it seems like with every regeneration, it gets more intense. Like, at first, it just kind of was like a phasing, and then with 9 into 10, it was was a little glowy. 11 was big, 12, and then, yeah. Yeah, 12 to 13. And as I mentioned, why do they keep regenerating? They know they're going to regenerate. Why do they do it? 
in the TARDIS when all that energy <laughs> is going to fly around and cause damage, you know, land on an abandoned planet, go into the middle of the desert, something like that, step outside, yeah. you know, regenerate, then go back in. That yeah. way you're on the ground. But anyways, definitely uh, enjoyed it. Um, loved throwbacks. Was a good special. It's not my favorite of the specials. Oh, yeah. But I thought a very solid Christmas special. Yeah, I just felt it was a great episode, but it's definitely not going to be one of the holiday tradition specials, like The Next Doctor. <laughs> Which we'll be watching soon. Or A Christmas Carol is also a great one to watch because of the whole, mm. you know, Scrooge-type vibe and yeah. stuff like that. But an excellent episode tied into Christmas and came out on Christmas, so it was technically a Christmas special, but it wasn't as Christmassy. It was the December special. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? What did you think of the Christmas special? Um, what did you think of the interaction between the first and the 12th Doctors and David Bradley, who I thought did an amazing job mm. as the first Doctor? What did... There's this comment thing down below. Use that. And uh, we do have some other videos over here. There's a subscribe down there. A link to May's channel right there. So check her channel out. She's got lots of great videos. Happy Life Day. And we will see you out there.